and the Evolution Shield feud, uh, which was really the focal point of 2014, with not really much going on in the way of creativity, coming off the Undertaker's win streak, at WrestleMania being ended by Brock Lesnar, which pissed a lot of people off, CM Punk quitting the company. That would have been a bit different if we would have seen something like Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt as opposed to Daniel Bryan versus Kane, which we had seen about 500 times up to that point in one-on-one matches to determine who was the better wrestler, the number one contender, or eventually the WWE champion with the reemergence of the Nash Kane character for the first time in months after Kane had worn the suit for a number of months as a member of the authority and the director of operations, which he redonned after losing to Daniel Bryan in the one opportunity that he got. He was supposed to get a rematch at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, but Daniel Bryan's injury became apparent, and he was forced to forfeit the title, and they had to determine a new champion in the Money in the Bank ladder match, which was for the first time ever, and they determined Johnson had gone to be a 15-time champion. Again, lack of creativity when you have to go back to having John Cena as the champion. Why couldn't have Bray Wyatt won that match? He was the number one contender for the title, and he was one of the eight superstars, eight or nine superstars in that match that he could have easily won it and came from out of nowhere. Again, they dropped the ball uh, with Bray Wyatt, and in my opinion, they are still dropping the ball with Bray Wyatt. The only good thing Bray Wyatt has going on now is this feud uh, with Dean Ambrose, about his father and his family members have a history of being in prison. They have a lot of personal issues, and the promos uh, are amazing. One example of a good promo was when Bray Wyatt actually was coming to us from inside of a prison cell. They were making it uh, apparent that he was locked inside of a cell, and he was referring to how Dean Ambrose's father had spent the majority of his lifetime in prison for things that he had done, and he wondered if uh, his father still sent him postcards from prison. That really irritated uh, Dean Ambrose, and Dean Ambrose was pushed over the edge. Another great promo uh, that I put over for the Dean Ambrose Bray Wyatt feud, which really set the emotion to an all-time high and really made it more personal than it was in weeks prior to the Slammy Awards, was the promo from the Slammy Awards where the ambulance came back after Bray Wyatt had attacked him on a previous edition of SmackDown. The smoke, of course, comes out of the back doors of the ambulance, and here comes Dean Ambrose to his entrance music, attacking violently, attacking Bray Wyatt, uh, making us wonder who's going to win this TLC match at the pay-per-view, which could be the most violent match out of any match we have seen uh, between Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose. And I want to know what your prediction is uh, for this match. I'm going uh, with Dean Ambrose uh, in this match because Dean Ambrose has really been pushed over the edge, and Bray Wyatt has gotten the better of Dean Ambrose a lot in their matches that we have seen back at Survivor Series, of course, and their matches prior to that. And he's been getting the better of him on tour for quite some time as well. And he's probably going to continue to get the better of him up until at least December 20th when this feud is expected how to reach its climax in the United States and Canada, and for an up-and-coming pay-per-view, at least by the Royal Rumble, I see this one lasting. And, you know, there mightn't be any significance to this, but at least it is something interesting for both wrestlers leading up to something more probable as early as 2015 within the first maybe two or three months. One of these two are guaranteed to go on to be number one contender for Brock Lesnar's title or whoever the champion is uh, by the time one of them are designated as the rightful and undisputed number one contender because this needs to have some significance. I mean, I'm tired of seeing things being destroyed. I'm tired of seeing, you know, cheers being destroyed. I'm tired of how Dean Ambrose is apparently pushed over the edge by Barry White because he's referring to his father being in prison and sending him postcards uh, from prison. I'm tired of the same old thing happening with no significance uh, in this feud, and I'm really tired of what the WWE are doing for Luke Harper and Eric Rowland because Eric Rowland to me uh, just doesn't interest me at all. It would be better if he was a heel. It would be better if all three of them were still heels as singles wrestlers because the unpredictability in this would still be at an all-time high for all three of these wrestlers regardless if they were together or not. I think the Wyatts are more effectively distributed as heel characters and I say this a lot about wrestling. You know, heels are sometimes better than fan favorites because heels uh, tend to be more unpredictable and that's why I'm fans of heels uh, more than I am of fan favorites a lot of the time because heels are really outrageous and they go a little bit too far on times like Kane did, for instance, in 2003. You know, Kane wasn't the more popular wrestler in 2003, but he was a better heel than half the roster who were making up the heel portion of the roster within that decade and that era. You know, he was unpredictable and he was just fun to watch. Nobody knew what he was going to do from one minute to the next to RVD or Shane McMahon, who he was feuding with at the time. And I think that, you know, nobody knows what someone like a Bray Wyatt is going to do at this point in time as a heel character. And the same thing could be said about Eric Rowland if he were a heel character. You know, you're saying the same thing about Luke Harper because he's still a heel character. It's a good decision to have both Bray and Luke 
as heel characters still, you know, separating them from the Wyatt family, but having Eric Rowland going in as a fan favorite, I know that usually they have one fan favorite, probably of a three-man team, uh, like they've gotten with the uh, Shield, but this time they've gotten two with Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, as opposed to having one of them come out of the uh, Shield as a fan favorite. Uh, but, you know, in my opinion, what you should have done uh, with the Wyatts is have all of them uh, be heels because the unpredictability this would have been more higher at an all-time high than what it is right now. We don't know what Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper are going to do, but we can pretty much decipher what Eric Rowland is going to do. Right now, fans are high on Eric Rowland, but will they still be as high on him by, say, February of next year? You know, I don't think that. If people like Bray Wyatt and uh, Luke Harper remain heels, they're probably still going to be high on him and uh, Luke Harper because of just how they were high on them when they were together as the Wyatt family, but I don't see it happening for Eric Rowland. Now, if he turns heel, I'll be more convinced that he has a prominent future for him, uh, but at this point, I'm really not. I'm not really convinced with anything going on for the Wyatts right now. At the end of the day, I'm more interested in finding if Randy Orton is going to come back and reassert himself as the number one contender for the championship. And the TLC pay-per-view, the really only interesting thing going on at the TLC pay-per-view, you can say that Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt is an interesting feud for the TLC pay-per-view because they're the TLC match uh, this year, and they're expected to be one of the more violent matches. But at the end of the day, really, the only interesting thing going on at the TLC pay-per-view is Seth Rollins versus John Cena in the tables match, and if Cena loses, a new number one contender for the title will be named as early as the fallout Raw from the TLC pay-per-view, which will take place on December 15th when the board of directors will be forced to name a new number one contender if John Cena, in fact, loses to Seth Rollins, which I'm predicting is going to happen because it's too obvious that John Cena is just going to throw 225-pound Seth Rollins, a cruiserweight wrestler back in the day, he would have been classified as. It's too obvious to say that Seth Rollins is just going to be AA through the table, and that's going to be it for Seth Rollins, because he still has that Money in the Bank contract, which you could cash in at any given time, and just having John Cena win the match will be way too obvious. It's more unpredictable if you have a new number one contender named because of the loss to Seth Rollins the night after at the Raw, after the TLC pay-per-view, which could happen. So I'm going with uh, Seth Rollins uh, over John Cena in this match. I would love to go with John Cena, but you know you need to convince me more that John Cena is going to win and benefit uh, going into 2015 because he's got way too much a momentum on his shoulders after winning at Hell in a Cell, taking that opportunity away from Randy Orton like he did, uh, becoming the number one contender, and uh, you know winning at the Survivor Series, which I was hoping he wasn't going to do. I was hoping the authority were going to stick around for a little while longer, but Sting coming in uh, was kind of cool too, because it's just a Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania 31, making up for the potentiality the Undertaker may not be headlining uh, WrestleMania for the first time in what would be forever. I think the last WrestleMania the Undertaker didn't headline was WrestleMania in 94 in Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania X. So this will be the first time possibly the Undertaker will not headline WrestleMania because he lost out of Brock Lesnar. But I'm still hoping Brock Lesnar versus the Undertaker has a chance of happening for the title match uh, this year. And you get Sting versus Triple H in there as an added bonus. So that uh, was kind of cool. But the thing is, John Cena has way too much momentum. And if he does uh, get to face Brock Lesnar, this will be what, the fourth time in the last decade I've written about in my column in this corner with Jonathan Clark. And I blogged about uh, from my Google blogger page, Cheap Shots with Jonathan Clark. This will be the fourth time in the last decade, Cena's fought Brock Lesnar in a WWE ring or a UFC-style match. It's too obvious to have Lesnar versus Cena again. And if you're Brock Lesnar, you got to be really frustrated. I'd rather see Bray Wyatt face Brock Lesnar than I would John Cena versus Brock Lesnar for the fourth or the fifth time within the last decade, which is what we're faced with. And I'm hoping that someone takes John Cena out of the title picture soon enough to give us something more to talk about than Cena versus Brock Lesnar for the fourth or fifth time in the decade, which I just mentioned, uh, which has got to be really frustrating for a lot of people. I think it's safe to say uh, more than one person is frustrated with the fact John Cena is once again number one contender for the title, and if he wins the title from Brock Lesnar, he'll be a 16-time champion, which could happen at WrestleMania 31, per se, where Cena becomes the 16-time champion and becomes the first person ever to tie the record of Ric Flair and possibly go on to be a 17-time champion, which is absolutely ridiculous. The thought of John Cena being a 17-time champion eventually, or even tying the record of Ric Flair without surpassing the record, is just frustrating to me, because we've waited all this time to see Brock Lesnar and the Undertaker streak, and for John Cena to become the man to tie the record or surpass it, a Ric Flair with 16 or 17 title reigns. We waited 20 years or longer to see these kind of things happening in professional wrestling. Shut the business down. 
if we had to be subject to this kind of thing. And this is what the realization of the professional wrestling business is revolving around because this really frustrates me to have to talk about this and do commentaries on things like this. You know, if the Wyatts were still together, we'd probably have a more probable future for all three of them. But with them separated, like the Shield were earlier this year, at the end of the day, the Shield had a more probable future because you had characters you could kind of run with as singles competitors. Dean Ambrose, of course, the Brian Pillman psychoticness is what he had going for him. The CM Punk style for Seth Rollins, I've compared Seth Rollins and CM Punk together quite oftenly because I think that Seth Rollins is in the position to be the replacement character for CM Punk because he resembles CM Punk that much. It's frighteningly, Seth Rollins is the new CM Punk, in my opinion, and the next candidate to be one of the longest reigning champions of the last 25, 30 years of 200 or or 300, what was it, 434 days. Yeah, 434 days, we could see a reign like that up for Seth Rollins if and when he cashes in the briefcase, which he has to do by at least uh, June or July of 2015, which is obviously coming up uh, for Seth Rollins. It could happen earlier than June or July of next year, and I'm hoping it does. He could be the next one to hold the title for 434 days, but uh, regardless if he does or not, he is the replacement character for CM Punk, in my opinion. And when you talk about Roman Reigns, he's the Batista of an evolution kind of uh, for the Shield, uh, who could really be a breakout star in due time. He's a candidate of mine to win of the 2015 Royal Rumble. So obviously when it comes to the Wyatts and the Shield, when it comes down to the wire, the, the uh, Shield were the ones that eventually benefited by separating all three members of the Shield as singles wrestlers. But right now the only one benefiting is the one you would expect to benefit from the separation of the Wyatts, and that is Bray Wyatt, and that's what we have to look forward to uh, for the very near future of professional wrestling. And I'm hoping in 2000.